Greetings one and all, Chris Courtney here from New Pragmatic. Thank you for joining me for this short video on building prototypes with Figma. There's no right or wrong way to create a prototype. It literally all comes down to what you're trying to learn and who you're trying to learn it from. In this particular video, we're gonna be building a simple prototype in Figma. This is something that you might use internally or something you might use as you began user testing with external users. While this is basically a wireframe, I always build all of my prototypes out with components. And as you can see from the assets here, this is gonna make it really easy to snap a prototype and add pages and whatnot to this as needed. It also makes it really easy to update this later as I begin to add fidelity to each of these frames. Because design is more than merely websites and mobile applications, I've decided to make this prototype focus on self-checkout and the steps necessary to guide somebody through that touchscreen experience. This is something you'll be familiar with if you've ever used a self-checkout lane at a grocery store. Ultimately, with all prototypes, this is the linking together of ideas so that you can see whether that concept works or not. I have nothing linked together right now. So our job is going to be not just linking these elements together, but determining the type of action that occurs so that we can see the sequence. To get that started, we need to first link these elements together. One of the biggest difference between print design and digital design is the concept of feedback to the user. With print design, everything's static. There is no ability to give the user feedback. In digital design, we have that ability. So in this particular prototype, we, ha we have an issue. Typically speaking, most users would begin scanning their items to trigger a response from the device. So in this case, we need to indicate to the user how they can get started with this prototype. As you can see below, I've added a line here. It says, click anywhere to initiate the first scan. This is a little different than most prototypes would be, but we want to be able to test this with users without having to lug around a self-checkout kiosk. We're just really testing the interface, not the actual device itself. So I'm going to link this to the element down below. And now we've created our first link. What we have to do now is determine when this occurs. In the upper right, there's a panel that gives us these options. Interaction, on click, on drag, while hovering, while pressing, mouse enter, leave, down, up, and after delay. I consider these to be really two different groupings. This is an action, like the user is doing something to trigger this or delay. For this particular version, I'm going to go with delay. I'm not going to count on a user to know naturally to move their mouse around to get the prototype started. I'm going to introduce the first screen, which is how most self-checkout lanes work. And then after a delay, I'm going to dissolve to show them this second screen that tells them that they, they should in fact click anywhere to initiate the first scan. You have an option here to focus on the type of interaction and then an option to focus on the type of animation. You can also control how that animation occurs and you can control how long it takes to occur. 1000 milliseconds is one second. If I said 500 milliseconds, that would be half a second 3,000 milliseconds, three seconds, and so on. In this particular case, I'm going to leave it at one, and then I'm going to hit present. When I hit present, it's going to spin up the prototype itself. And as you can see, this screen that I'm designing for is actually larger than my screen. So what I'm going to do is you have some adjustment ability here, and I'm gonna go scale down to fit. This is important to do before you share the prototype because Figma will preserve these settings and scale down to fit works really well because I want, it to, I want this to scale down to fit any particular device that the, the person is using. So I'm gonna scale down to fit and as you can see, there we are. And let's go ahead and go back and you'll see after about a second, this fades in. That seems very minor, but it's very important because we want to present the interface as it normally would appear and then we want to give them the guidance. So you now know exactly what they're going to think to do next, which is they're going to click anywhere. And while we could 
connect with any of these elements. You see the little dot at the, at the side that tells you that you could link that particular element to trigger an action. We're going to select the frame. And this frame is going to come up to our next frame. So this is kiosk begin. This is kiosk begin with the helper. And then this is kiosk scan. Kiosk scan has the first scan and they've scanned some potato chips. And then now we have a, a readout here. Like this entire area has filled in now because something has occurred. We have to think about what this interaction is going to be. Well, this interaction should naturally be click because we just told them to click anywhere. So it'll be on click and they're gonna navigate to kiosk scan. Now this could do a lot of different things. I'm going to simply dissolve. And when we dissolve, we're going to ease in, which is fine. And then I want that to happen relatively quickly. So I'll shorten that animation I'm going to save this. Let's come back over to the kiosk. And when I click, you can see a number of things have changed. Not only has this scan actually appeared, but we also have now two items down here, cancel item and finish and pay. So I could go back and cancel that item or I could finish and pay. For the next step of this prototype, I'd like to focus on this concept of quick lookup. And what you'll notice is there has been a change designed here. It says kiosk scan weight. This kiosk scan weight indicates that somebody has put something on the scale. So I'm going to click between kiosk scan and kiosk scan weight, and this is going to be another delay. And after delay, and I will go ahead and dissolve this in, and I'll make it 1000 milliseconds. After a delay, this will change. To make this really apparent, I'm gonna add a touch of a color to the background of this. We will make it a color that people can actually see. And that should draw a bit more attention that something has changed down here below. And from here, we will identify how we want to carry forward. So we have two options quick lookup and we have lookup by name. So let's go ahead and start connecting these these elements together. So I have this frame. It is set up for a delay. After a delay, it's going to dissolve in. And then here for scan weight, I know that I want to link quick lookup. I want to link that there. And you'll notice I'm indicating that something has been tapped now. So I've got quick lookup here and we have quick lookup here. This is why I like utilizing components. This is really just an instance, and I can switch these instances out pretty rapidly. It's just simply coming through and changing to a new instance. Obviously, I don't want those to be indicated as pressed, but I do want this one to be. When we're working from this quick lookup button over to having it selected, I want to make sure that this is a click. So I'm going to say on click. I want this to animate relatively fast. And then this isn't a click. I shouldn't require anything of the user for it to then move on to the next screen, which is the quick lookup trigger. So what I would like to do is I'd like to go from the item over to quick lookup trigger and say after delay, but I can't do that on a individual item. I can only use after delay from the frame itself. So if you have things in your design that are meant to pass automatically through, you can only do that from the frame level. And now I can pull in after delay and I can make that relatively fast. Another thing to keep in mind is differences in the animation. To this point, we've only used dissolve. We could use something like smart animate, but really I want this entire area to move in. And as you can see, that's what's an indicating that's going to happen right here with the an animation preview here. Let's go ahead and see how this is working for us at this point. Another thing I'll point out, this automatically updates in this prototype tab that you have already created. So any changes that you make, you don't have to reload it. It's just already, already there. So I'm gonna click here and then we're going to go for quick look up and then it drops that down. So there's no need to do any sort of special animation. You want that entire page to come in and Figma is going to allow you to do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at smart lookup and this is lookup by name. We're gonna click down here 
And now we have lookup by name. And lookup by name, I have not created that page. So I'm not going to necessarily carry this out. It is, um, it is helpful to know that you can have multiple paths off of a single prototype, but um, I have not built out this particular path at this point. We will, we will go ahead and finish that though. That is on click and it is navigating to a kiosk lookup by name. Now that we're here, we want to trigger that we have found the Granny Smith apples and we're going to move over here because you can see that that Granny Smith apple item has been selected. I'm going to drag that across. This is on click. I do not want it to move in. I just want this to dissolve. So here we've changed that. And now I obviously want this to automatically happen. I, I don't want to have to think to click this again. I'm going to come back to kiosk quick lookup dash selected. And I do try to name these, these frames so that it's a little easier to, to, to follow along what's happening. So I'm going to select the entire frame and I'm going to go ahead and move that over to kiosk cancel. And what you'll see is in kiosk cancel, we are basically going to say, I want to cancel this particular item. I want to make sure that this is functioning properly. As you can see, it's on click. I said, I wanted that to be after delay. And then I had this entire panel drop down here. We had it drop down here. I want it to move up. So I want to reverse that, that direction that it had. So here we had move in. Now I'm going to have it move out and I'm going to have it lift. And you can see how that animation works. And it's going to be after a, a short delay. So we'll change that to like 400 milliseconds. And now we're at cancel item. Cancel item is interesting because it is another item where I need to click or tap the screen. I'm going to come over. And what I actually want to trigger is cancel select, but now I want cancel select to do something a little different. Now I want this cancel select to on a delay, pull in this overlay. This, this cancel overlay is not a page. So what we actually need to do is we need to open overlay and you'll notice that it gets a special little icon here. This overlay also gives us the ability to see what's happening around the shape. Uh, we can add a background here, and this gives the ability to determine what that background color is and the opacity on it. This animation is instance. You do have a few options here. We next want to connect this overlay. If we've, if we've selected yes, we do want to delete the item. We want to come over to the next overlay, and now we're swapping the overlay. We don't want to open an overlay. We want to swap it. And cancel overlay two is going to be automatic. So this is where we, we've selected the entire overlay frame. And then after a delay, we're going to dissolve back here to the cancel kiosk scan. Let's go ahead and just see if how this is functioning. So here's our initial scan. We've gotten our Lay's potato chips in here. We're going to select quick look up. That's dropped in the quick look up. We're going to select the Granny Smith apples. That pulls it out. We're now going to say, you know what? I don't want those Granny Smith apples. I need to cancel that. And that required a click, which I did not want. So I'm going to go, go back and let's check that again. So we didn't want this to happen on click. We wanted this to happen after delay. Let's go ahead and redo that. It is not uncommon to have these issues. That's why we test our prototypes. Let's uh, select Granny Smith apples. That's gonna lift. Let's select cancel item. Are you sure you want to delete this item? Yes. And now it has deleted that item. There's one thing I do want to advise that you do with all of your prototypes. Always build an escape hatch into all of them. What I mean by that is I need a way to get back to the beginning of this prototype. This is typically where I utilize something like a logo or some other architectural element to take me back to the initial home screen. So I'm gonna select this and actually I'm gonna zoom out and I'll drag it all the way back to the home page. And this is just going to unclick, start the whole thing over again. The interesting thing is that if I duplicate this and move it down, you'll see that that link persists. So had I simply thought ahead of time to do this and then replicate it that frame, I could have had that link already there. So it's just something to think about as you're going through and creating your prototype. 
If you know that you're going to link back to the home page, go ahead and create those links early so that you can save yourself the time of having to do it later. Let's go ahead and look at our prototype one more time. So that now we're automatically back at the beginning. The animation worked here. We're going to do quick lookup. We're going to select the Granny Smith apples. We're going to cancel that item. I'm going to say yes. And then we're going to go back home. And that's it. That is prototyping in Figma. Prototyping is really about connecting your ideas together and seeing if they work. If you enjoyed this video on prototyping with Figma, please click subscribe and get updates when we release new videos. And if you're looking to elevate your design career, come visit me at newpragmatic.com. I'm Chris Courtney for New Pragmatic. Thanks for watching.